Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. I haven't been around, so I'm gonna show you what I have been working on. Well, I say I, but really it's been we, because there have been people playtesting these things and it's been awesome. But in this video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of things that you probably don't even think are possible. And look what I mean. You want to have a quest? Here's a quest. To start our quest, we're gonna need to get ourselves to that island. On the way, there's a bunch of Deathskito. But watch this. Boom. No more Deathskito problems, because you got this lantern, and it just insta-zaps them. This is the kind of stuff you can do. But I don't want to distract you with these trivial things. Let's get to the kind of quests that you can make on a vanilla, friendly server. And you need to take a ship to the coast of a plains, and then summon a traitor. Yes, there is actually a whole summoning system that I won't even get into. I'll just say that you can summon traitors by making 999 coins, putting it on the floor, and typing summon. That's gonna show up this special dverger who says some messages that I won't make you guys all read called a long shit master. This is basically a quest giver. He tells you what he needs. In this case, it's to make a butcher table. And now we've made the butcher table, he notices and says, look, this is what you need to do. Bring me all of this metal, and then I'll make you a special kind of ship. You can see here, we already have a ship, but it is just a regular longboat. Basically, this shipmaster will upgrade our boat to a boat that holds way more stuff Basically, the only thing that can destroy it is fire. But in order to do so, we need to take this boat and fill it with 180 bronze, 180 iron, and 180 silver. Conveniently for you, you're just watching a video, so I can just show you what happens when you bring the full boat over here. You simply fill it up, and then jump out, and then boom. Look at this. We see some fancy pants visuals, some fireworks up in the sky, and then if we go up to this boat, what's going on here? This holds the vast hull of Nar, right? Look how many slots it has. This has a huge inventory screen where you can fit entire builds in some cases. And because it's in the hull of the ship, it doesn't affect the buoyancy. So with multiplayer, it's way more reasonable than having a bunch of carts and stuff in your boat, which is kind of a reality of the no map, no portal life. But now, with a relatively simple quest that you get mid-game, using silver as the highest metal, you can get a really useful ship. And not only are these ships very useful, but they actually self-defend themselves when there aren't players nearby. Whenever they're attacked, they spawn mistles automatically, which are tamed to the player. And they do a surprisingly good job of not destroying the boat. Eventually, they'll disappear, but you can see that they had no problems quickly taking out that pack of 12 goblin. But, for the sake of player safety, once the player's actually in the ship, Nothing happens. Those mistles will only spawn if the player is further away. For example, if we were to shoot the boat with an arrow, then you can see that we can trigger the mistles to spawn, because we're far enough away. But because they have no targets, they just kind of wait around for something to happen. But this is actually just one of the boat quests. I won't waste your time by showing you the mechanics. I've already shown you that there is a concept of a generational quest that you can start anywhere once you have the right materials. Here we are at the position to start the next quest. Well, actually, this would be the first quest, because it's in the Black Forest, and it's for an upgraded carve. Basically, we're gonna make this carve the fastest vehicle in Valheim. A little bit hard to control, but something that you can scout around to your heart's content. All you gotta do is bring the carve to the Black Forest, and then just summon a trader here. You're gonna get a named trader called a Carve Shipmaster. From this point on, you'll figure it out, and you'll inevitably end up with what you need to upgrade the Carve. In this case, players need to get a whopping 200 Amber Pearls. Yeah, that's right, you know those things that you never really cared about that you always just sold to the trader and you definitely didn't go to look for? 
Well now, if you go look for them and you get 200 of them, this is what happens. Yeah, okay, this one obviously is a little bit overkill, but basically the boat itself gives you buffs. So you get a rested bonus by just being near the boat. But not only that, look how fast this boat is. It's actually pretty hard to steer, so you sort of have to go back into rudder mode, slow down, and then open the sails. And you can see that the carve is just noticeably faster. This is one of the many creative options that you have available to modify your Valheim experience. And as I mentioned before, any player can just step onto the server, log in, and they'll experience all of this. They can do a quest, they can do all sorts of stuff, and the game, if done correctly, will actually show you how to do all these things. So it's not like you need to study all the features, you can just play Path of Magic, and it will teach you how to play Path of Magic. Valheim is really a gem. And it's unleashed a new potential now, thanks to the work of people like Yere. Yere has enabled us to create custom Valheim experiences. Everything I've shown you is actually rather simple, believe it or not. You can do things that you wouldn't even imagine. You could make a whole game inside of Valheim using Expand World prefabs on a Valheim server. Or even just on your own computer just to play for yourself. There's a summoning system where you can use all of those excess trophies to actually summon both aggressive or friendly monsters. We can see on the chart that we need three troll trophies. We're gonna summon an angry troll. So all we have to do is take three of these trophies, throw them on the ground, and then type say summon. This brings in a monster. So players now have the ability to spawn aggressive monsters. And not only aggressive, if we double the troll trophy amount and throw down six trophies, now we can summon again. Except this time, we're gonna get a friendly one-star troll. And you can actually make monsters fight without using any dev commands and in a way that takes away trophies from the game. Normally, a clutter item. Speaking of trophies, we've also completely revamped the raid system, so there are no more base raids. You can just build, but don't worry, we didn't just get rid of the raids, we merely placed them into the player's hands. You see, on Path of Magic there is no traditional raid system. You're free to build your base as long as you want, progress as much as you want, you're not gonna have any night spawns for other players, or have any raids on your base. However, the moment you place a trophy, that all changes. Instead of putting raids on players, players now summon the raids by placing trophies of the relevant monster. The more you put up, the more likely you are to have a Grounded Shaking raid. And if you put up around 10 or so, then it is actually possible to have a constant raid that never ends. We have put raids entirely into the player's hands. So, I just died, which was not what I expected. But, you see how I have this onion soup in my inventory? That is another path of magic thing done with Expand World Prefabs. Basically, whenever you log in, if you made the dumb mistake of putting some random bed in the middle of nowhere, is that a charred fortress? Well, then at least you get to come into the situation with some food. And that'll happen every time you log in. It's tied to the quality of the bed and also the biome that you're in. Here we have another oddity. You may have found these evil statues wandering through the swamp, and on Palm, they are in the swamp. You can actually also build them, but I won't show you how to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you the other features. Instead of just being some random item, you can actually interact with the statue, and you'll get a rested bonus from the evil statue if you interact near it, which means you punch or you jump. You do any kind of action close to it, and you'll get a free rested buff which is really beneficial in the swamp. But not just that, if you, by mistake, or maybe on purse, or maybe on purpose, whack the evil statue, 
And now, as you can see, we have aggroed all of these goblin here. So the evil statue now serves as an object that the player can use to lure enemies, which enables a whole bunch of crazy stuff, especially with biome-on-biome -biome combat. The last thing I'll show you is the floor trading system. This is a system that is designed to put use and value into treasures such as coins, so that the players actually want to go get coins. And in general, I try and make building things available to players earlier than they would normally get them. This isn't the most up-to-date graphic, but it shows the general gist of how this system works. Let's look at the easiest one, which is a cart for 200 coins. All I have to do is take those 200 coins in one pile and throw them on the ground. And then we're going to type say buy. This is going to summon our cart. Look at that, it worked quicker than it normally does, that looked nice. And it's just like any other cart. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of resources available this way. Let's look at another one. One of the more popular ones, of course, would be buying iron, because people always need more iron. So if we take 930 coins, that's 930 coins, just toss it on the ground, and then say buy, and then boom, look at that we get 30 iron, and it's just like any other kind of iron. Now, the deal here is that this allows players to use coins, but this is no portal, no map, so players have to move stuff around on their boats anyway, so they still have to move the coins. That makes it more balanced. I say that because all of the chat in this server is put onto Discord, and you can actually look at the chat here and type hello, and then if I go into the game, look, you can see me saying hello. This adds a level of transparency and community to the server that is really important, and I wish Valheim came with these features, because it makes a huge difference being able to see what people are doing without having to log on. It makes the server feel more alive. And I said we at the beginning of the video because I would be dishonest if I told you that I'm the one who's made this. What really happens is I watch the players, and they have experiences, and those experiences give me ideas that actually work. Without watching the players, my ideas don't work. Because I can't just come up with the right idea. It has to come from seeing other people play and hearing their experience. And that's where the Discord server comes in. People have been helping me playtest and every day I'll do some kind of update on the server, and then people kind of playtest a bit if they can. Sometimes they're kind of intense quests, right? So you can't just immediately try it. But a lot of the features are quick, so I can get feedback on them, and it has been an absolute blast. If you're interested in setting up a Valheim server for yourself, you could actually do the same thing I do with any dedicated server service, or even just on your own computer for free. However, it's a lot easier to use a dedicated server host. I personally use Zap. The server that I'm playing on right now is a Zap server, and I've used it for years. Zap has treated me really well, and I've been happy to advertise their products. So if you want to get a Valheim server, I encourage you to use them. They have good customer service, and if anything does happen, they're very willing to work with you and give you credits if there's outages, and I've never had any problems that they weren't able to resolve. And my idea now is to be more beneficial to the community and also have a lot of fun by making tutorials and information so that you all can make your own quests in Valheim. That's going to be one of the upcoming videos. I'm pretty excited for it. If you want to see more videos about Valheim, then just like this video or any other video about Valheim and YouTube will dish out the content. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.